Pickaxe. Hello, and welcome back to the Review of Death, a Doctor Who podcast, your fortnightly home for Doctor Who news and reviews. I'm Matthew Toffolo. I'm joined as ever by Billy Garrett Jock. Hello. And later in the programme, we'll be joined by my brother, Jonathan <laughs> Toffolo, to talk about Paradise Towers and some of the casting news of Doctor Who. Programme, you make it sound so official and... Thank you. And join us later, because we're going to have a nice giveaway, a surprise giveaway. So, whew, stay tuned for that. But, before we get into all that stuff, yeah. Billy, what the hell is the Hooniverse? I don't bloody know, yeah. but I feel like it's something Disney have gone, we'll have a bit of that, yeah. you know, and we'll put it all over the place. So we'll, like, uh, I can <laughs> picture on the loading screen of Disney+, Plus, Marvel, you know, uh, Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> National Geographic, Star, and Doctor Who. Yeah. It feels like it's going to happen at yeah. some point, because there's so much they can put on already. Yeah. I mean, not that many people are going to bother watching that if they're not interested in no. Doctor Who. But beforehand. you never know. People might be like, "Oh, what's this?" Well, I've, I've, I've heard of this Doctor Who stuff. What's Torchwood? Oh no, it's got him in it. Oh, um, every episode redacted. <laughs> yeah, every episode's just got a big black bar over one person's yeah. head. Um, yeah, I mean, the the Hooniverse is something that has come into being. We think in the last couple of days. Yeah. But actually, I think somebody found that a listing had been made for a company called Hooniverse Limited. Oh, I November. remember this. Oh, this rings a bell. And so it feels like maybe things have been in the works for yeah. a little while. Um, Shooty Gatwell obviously posted something on Instagram. It's a photo of himself with, you know, the home of the Hooniverse behind him. Yeah. And I think that probably means we're getting spin-offs galore. Yeah. Um, because otherwise it would have been home of Doctor Who. Yeah, and a photo of him with the TARDIS would have been yeah. enough. But, I mean, the Hooniverse yeah. is kind of a name that's waiting to be copyrighted expanded upon. And yeah. Expanded upon. Um, yeah, it's, you've got your MCU. Exactly. Doctor Who Cinematic Universe. No, Let's not get it, into <laughs> the minutiae of it because we might go mad. But I thought something that might be fun next week. Right. Although in two weeks' time from when you're watching this, if you go out and watch it on the day it came out. Yeah. We should come in with four spin-offs each. Right. And pitch them. Right. Like, I want a synopsis. Oh my God. You know, I want a title. You've got to have one cartoon in there. And you've got to bring me four original programs to pitch to Disney+. Plus. One cartoon, what you mean? I need to sketch what this no, is. No, 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 just one animated series. Oh, fine, okay. Out of the four. Fuck me, right. And okay. you've got to bring me four brand new original series to pitch to Disney+. Plus. To go on the network. This wow. is, you know, okay. maybe across a year or two years of programming. This is aside from Doctor Who. Yeah. But there's going to be a couple of, couple of caveats. I'm not going to, you know, put them out there just yet. Right. But I think that might be fun because we're going to go through some suggestions that people have put to us. Yeah. On Twitter. And they're a bit mental. Are they? Some of them are hilarious and some of them are certifiable. <laughs> but we'll, 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 we'll go through them. How I'll, many of them are like genuine? How many of these people are like, actually, no, I, I really want this one? See, the people that have done that, I've sort of ignored. <laughs> because they've also, cause a lot of those are Eighth Doctor. Yeah. And I think it's fair to say that probably won't happen. Sadly, yeah. I think one caveat we should come up with for our Hooniverse pitches in a fortnight's time. Yeah is you cannot have any Doctor past, present, or future right, that, in that, your I, series. I mean, those would have been the, the mm. guides that I would have put, enforced upon myself anyway. Yeah, so, exactly. Because I just think, well... You know. No Daleks. Interesting. No Cybermen. Cool. That's it. God those dear. are the three rules. Imagine telling that to Big Finish. Christ. <laughs> I know, they'd be out of business within a week. Uh, no cat spin-offs. That bloody new New Earth box set that went for <laughs> one volume. Wow. Um, so let's have a look. Yeah, a lot of Eighth Doctor Time War. Da 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 da. Uh, this is a great one from Floppy Lion. Uh, Finger Fun with Zelin. <laughs> Zelen plays practical jokes on an unsuspecting public with hilarious consequences. Very good. Which I like sounds it. absolutely beautiful. Um, Pull my finger. Wee. Hey, <laughs> what's going to happen there? Um, yeah, there's a, there's a couple of good ones here. Peladon Game of Thrones. Right, nice. That sounds like fun. I mean, I think a Peladon. Yeah. A Peladon would series would, would be, be good, good. Yeah. anyway. Uh, Miss Hawthorne's Mystical Hour. Miss who? Miss Hawthorne. Hawthorne. 
What's from, she from? From the demons. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry. Miss cool. Hawthorne wow. investigates Band. magical and mysterious goings on in a world outside Devil's End. Wow. That sounds cool. Now, how is how are we? How is that happening? Is this? A I drama? think we're going to have to recast as, that, a, as a drama. Is it a drama? Is yeah, it? okay. I think so. I was I was envisioning some sort of like Ghost Watch <laughs> type scenario. <laughs> well, you know, the Hooniverse is ever expanding, Matthew. Yeah. Anything could happen. Uh, Matthew Purchase says, The Emperor of Games from Bad Wolf Studios, a series of iconic game shows reimagined from Satellite 5. Oh, interesting. Friends of the Doctor, played by real members of the public, also compete in epic challenges within the Hooniverse for a cash prize to defeat the Emperor Dalek. Ooh. That's a bit like the James Bond series it that's is, coming from yeah. Amazon, which I applied to work on and it didn't happen. No. I think uh, you said I applied to be on it. I applied to appear and it didn't happen. Uh, uh, Deborah says, uh, Beep the Meep spin-off, stop motion made by Ardman, an exact redo of Shaun the Sheep, but Shaun is swapped for Beep, that's the only change. Same theme tune. Right. Life's a treat with Beep the Meep. We can do that. <laughs> Vic Reeves, yeah. we can bring him in. We can do that. Um, Survivor's style invasion of the Dalek prequel. Call the midwife, but it's the sisters of Plentitude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a casualty style medical drama set on Necros. A prequel to Revelation of the Daleks, so it can feature Tass and Beaker, and we can dive into her unrequited love for Mr. Joe Bell. Oh, wow. That sounds Grim. quite fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's only one way that's going to end, and we yeah. know exactly how it's going to end. Um, toupee on the steps. <laughs> toupee on the... Uh, I, I mean, that's a great title. Yeah. Uh, bring back Lady Christina. That's not going to happen, Macra, I'm afraid. Uh, otherwise, we're all running out of ideas. Linda. <laughs> Linda. Linda. I mean, one that I think people feel is kind of guaranteed... So I think we have to exclude it from our Hooniverse ideas in a fortnight's time. Would be the companion, you know, what AA meeting that they set up in Power of the Doctor. Because that feels like it's sort of been set up and running. Yeah. But I but don't know. What's what, the likelihood of that happening? Do I you don't, reckon you can I get Bradley Walsh out of the Chase studio for nah, six I, months? I, I don't think the AA thing will happen. Well, like, I don't think it's really got legs as a spin-off. I think mm. Unit having, you know, rotating guest companions might have more legs. Yeah. Because she, she said something like, oh, I might have some work for you lot. Which, I mean, and we know that they're back in yeah. the Russell Who. So, uh, Pating Mukbangs from <laughs> Jack, which sounds like a great idea for a series. Uh, the Quest is the Quest, a fascinating look at the 100,000 years the Minions spent looking for <laughs> the P7E before they met the Doctor and Leela in Underworld. These are some really deep cut wow. references. I'm glad that everybody's going for it. My God. Um, the Terry Nation Dalek spin-off from the 60s. Yeah. I, but then again, you, you know, I don't think we're going to get the Daleks in Shooty's first series. No. Do you want to introduce them in spin-offs only for them to sort of... Because mm. if they're the enemy, they have to be defeated in this spin-off, surely yeah. by the end of the first series. I mean, you lessen their impact when they come into the main yeah, show. Yeah, I don't know how you... Yeah. I think I would leave the sp a Dalek spin-off until mm. later, for yeah. sure. Um, Ace, an Ace spin-off series. A lot of people have been saying that. A Pridonian Academy spin-off where the students learned of the many Time Lords and ladies that came before them. Um, uh, a Georgia Tennant spin-off as Jenny. Right. Which is actually something that I've penciled in for one of my pitches oh, okay. for the, uh, the, when we come around to doing things. Um, this is a great one uh, from Jason. Honestly, I'd love a spin-off about people displaced by weeping angels. Oh, that's a good one. That is a really cool idea. That's a good idea. one. That'd be like Quantum Leap. But yeah, exactly. You know, that, that's cool. I like people that. People sort of, every every single episode is somebody else adjusting to yeah. being in a different place in time. That, see, that, I can, I can imagine that. Ellie has said, uh, Benny's Bonanza Adventures and Friends. Benny is in as Benny in, Summerfield. No, as, as in... Oh, oh my Benny. Benny! Oh Benny, oh, Benny. My Benny! Oh God, yeah. Benny being ripped to shreds Benny. by a, a dreg. Great name for a monster, actually. Now I think about it, going back. The dregs were cool. The dregs were they were cool, cool looking, and they were good, good uh, monsters. Yeah. Uh, Dre says uh, Kenny from School Reunion fighting monsters. <laughs> sure, let's go for it. Why not? <laughs> wow, that is a that is a deep cut. As well. And finally, from from Peter the Dalekian. Uh, the cookbook of River Song. We can only hope that those things will happen. They should do. I, oh no, because I, I, I can't say anything because, you know. 
That's for next time. Why can't... Ah, oh, you've got... Ah, oh, you're going to keep everything under your hat. i got some ideas. They're, they're, they're brewing. Cooking away. Yeah. Well, you can find out about those uh, in the next episode of The Review of Death. It's an incredibly exciting time because it's like the way that they've sort of faux announced this yeah. through Shooty's Instagram is sort of... They know what they're doing. Yeah. They know they're planting the seeds of things to yeah. come. So we just have to sort of wait and see what happens. Yeah. But I, I feel like there is some big stuff on the way, some stuff that's probably been bubbling under the surface for a little while. Uh, we don't know where this money has suddenly come from for the Doctor Who animated reconstructions. No. That could form part of the who I mean, it would be very easy just to stick whatever logo or sting they go yeah. for at the front of that. It was funny, I was watching the season two box set the other day and obviously it's got the, the old Jodie logo thing yeah, that they yeah. did, which seems so weird yeah because it seems out of place yeah because it felt like it was meant to be Mm. a bold statement for bigger and better things that didn't really happen when when did it get used it got used when it got announced yeah it got used on the box sets yeah maybe it appeared at one of the press screenings maybe and that was it yeah they had a whole thing composed by a completely different yeah guy to whoever did the main theme and you know it was like a totally separate thing yeah how weird is that it's really bizarre i'd love to know what that was all about oh we'll find out one day yeah we'll find out well, i mean chris chibnall is going to galley one i saw that does he have a death wish <laughs> well yeah i think so i mean you know you know god bless him but who knows who knows what sort of stuff he might say now because mm. he's you know he's not on the bbc payroll anymore yeah. he might be like oh yeah this happened but whatever he says there is going to be a quarter of what eventually comes out of yeah you know various books and yeah articles it. and interviews some in the future some blokes down the pub going yeah, oh going, yeah I worked on Doctor Who and it was it fucking nightmare I was <laughs> promised millions by the Chinese government <laughs> and it didn't happen um, um, yeah so I mean the Hooniverse is ever expanding and yeah. that is a very exciting prospect for all of us um, and uh, speaking of an expanded Hooniverse yeah I wonder how long these are going to be going for uh, Doctor Who uh, the War Doctor begins. He who fights with monsters is available for you all to win. Uh, if you watch the rest of this video, you'll get the question. Yeah. You'll find out how to enter. Um, and uh, it's really just an opportunity for you guys to enjoy listening to Johnny uh, talking about an era of Doctor Who that he actually likes. Yeah. Pff, bloody hell, can you imagine that? No, bonkers. So uh, we'll see you in this setup in a fortnight's time, but enjoy the rest of this episode. Well, no, not bye-bye. See you in a minute. No, no, see you in a minute, yeah. Hello, and welcome back to The Review of Death, your fortnightly home for Doctor Who news and reviews. I'm Matthew Toffolo. I'm joined as ever by Billy Garrett John, and I'm also joined by Jonathan Toffolo, big brother, and uh, the one that we always wheel out when we do a Sylvester McCoy story. <laughs> uh, uh, we're talking about Paradise Towers, so that's why he's here. Hey, um, there we go. So, welcome, gentlemen. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you for having us. Before we start, mm. uh, we've got a giveaway. No. Yes. No. Uh, thanks to the very kind people at Big Finish who accidentally sent me two copies of the same <laughs> box set. We've got a copy of The War Doctor Begins, He Who Fights With Monsters. See, if that was me, I would not have said the second half of that. I would have said courtesy of Big Finish. I know, but I thought it made it more amusing to uh, say I would have added a bit of mystique to think that they might be on our side. Yeah, yeah. no one's on our side. That's <laughs> true. We, we discussed this that the other is day. True. No one's on our side. Uh, yes, so starring Jonathan Carley. Uh, who does a tremendous job as John Hurt. Uh, hopefully he's listening to this podcast right now. Who knows? Um, Hello, Jonathan. Uh, Hello, yes. I'm here. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, uh, we, so we have this to give away. Uh, and how are we giving this away? Well, we. I mean, I yeah, came up with a question that was actually oh. kind of... Well, there's that as well, yeah. Johnny. I came up with a question that made a bit more sense. Johnny had a couple of ideas about questions that we could ask. Yeah. Do you want to run them past the viewers, well, Johnny, and then we'll go for the real questions. one? I have two possible questions. I have... One which is not Doctor Who related, which was, can you guess how many pupils I teach currently this academic year? Yeah. And my other one was, can you guess how many ties I've currently purchased in trying to get a most accurate season 26 tie? So the real question is, <laughs> what colour kangs honour the unalive yellow kang with a special ceremony? And you can email us at thereviewofdeath at gmail.com. 
just put Big Finish CD as the subject and the answer in your thing and an address that we can send it to and we'll randomly select one. Or alternatively, feel free to answer my questions <laughs> and put them in the comments underneath in the yeah. video. If you can answer all three and <clears throat> you get them all right, I will I'll give you everything that I haven't been able to sell on eBay <laughs> <laughs> between now and me leaving and going to New Zealand. Oh my God. Um, right. What are we talking about today, Matthew? Uh, we're talking about Paradise Towers. Uh, <laughs> is there any news or anything that we need to mention? Uh, well, there's a big slug that's sucking people off in uh, yeah. Doctor Who True. location True, that's going on yeah, in Newport, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, a oh, lot of that uh, kind of thing happens in Newport. What are we talking about? Mm. Of course there's news. What's that? Jenna what? Ray Graves is back as uh, Kate Stewart. Yeah, but oh, yeah. you have to be the least interested person in the world to say that. Like, I know. After what you said about her and Power of the Doctor. <laughs> mm. I know, but I'm just trying to add a bit of pizzazz bit to this of thing. Way. Well, well I mean, Doctor yeah. Who might be filming in Bristol this week That's that we're recording, true. So, so that may have already, well, it would have already happened, maybe or maybe yeah. not. Yeah, by the time this goes, yeah. Yeah, it may have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's coming back, unit's coming back. Mm. I mean, we knew unit were going to be in the 60th anyway, because we've seen them in the trailer. And, and we saw that. Um, helicopter shot of the helipads yeah. on the mm. bad wolves, yeah, outside yeah. the studios. Um, um, and there's also this. Uh, sorry, am I right? On you? I'm sorry. That's I'm right. not used to no, I mean, you being I'm here. Not that big. So I'm just you know, yeah, I there's what usually is, a goal. What is going on? It's yeah. about a Matthew you know. size yeah. between yeah. us. Yeah. Um, sorry, that's right. <laughs> there's this Roger App Williams fella. Yeah. Uh, which so who's he then? Well, he. Uh, <laughs> we don't know, Jonathan. At the right. stage. Okay. You have to ask Russell T Davies. Oh, right. I'll oh, get him on the blur and I'll, I'll yeah. ask him. Yeah. Uh, app. He didn't reply to my message on his. No, he didn't. I'm not surprised. Um, app meaning son of, so yeah. Roger, son of Willie, Williams. <laughs> Williams, 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 fucking hell, we'll get there eventually. Uh, and there seems to be some kind of alt-right years and years type deal going on. Yeah, there. yeah, exciting, yeah. So, ultra-conservative yeah. bastard. Let's burn them. Yeah. Uh, right, okay, now we're past uh, calling for people's executions. Mm. Let's get on to Paradise Towers. Mm. It's, it feels like this is a story that we've been saying we all do for, for a about long like the last time. 14 years. I think it's basically... Actually, have we known each other that long? No, no. About nine. Okay. For the last nine years. Ever since I said I quite like it and Matt went, no you don't, we've wanted to do this video. Yeah. Um, and obviously we brought Johnny in because you would have been watching it on initial yeah. broadcast. I watched it at 87, mm -hmm. so I was four. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I do remember seeing it, yeah. um, but I said to Matt, I don't remember this one as vividly as I remember Time and the Rani or Dragonfire. Sure. Wonder why. And also Delta. I wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> or, so yeah. So well, as we'll see. But I do remember watching it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I just don't have, you know, standout moments. Mm. No. For obvious reasons. Well, let's have a look here and see if you remember any of this. Do you remember the box office number one at the time, Jonathan? What, at four years of uh, age? four years of age. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Smack my bitch up. Yeah. <laughs> no, box office. But oh. Beverly Hills Cop 2 oh, yeah. was number one, as that... well as The Untouchables. Uh, right. This year would also see the releases of The Fly. Oh, oh nice. Great film. Yeah, yeah. Crocodile oh. Dundee. Yeah. Lethal Weapon. Oh, yeah, they're, they're oh, a good film. Great. Platoon. Right, yeah. Star Trek IV The Voyage Home. Yeah, okay. That's a little plug for your for, upcoming yeah, yeah, podcast. Yes. Uh, Superman IV, The Quest for Peace. Oh dear. Um, it's a bad one, isn't it? Filmed in Milton Keynes. And The I Living think... Daylights. Oh, oh, very good. Which was the second highest grossing film in the UK that year. Crocodile Dundee was number one. Wow. Uh, uh, number one in the charts was Pump Up the Volume by Mars. I can't imagine at four years old you were in the clubs off your no, face I don't on think so. No, no, no. That, no. Unlikely. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> or since. Or <laughs> since, yeah. <laughs> the most yeah. important thing that happened was that uh, literally days before this episode went out, IKEA opened their first store in the UK. Did wow, they? Wow. How about that? 87. Sp I don't know, the same Milton Keynes, why not? <laughs> Let's just go for Milton Keynes wow. as a random place. I did it around Keynes before. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bastion of culture. <laughs> um, so yeah, like uh, I, I remember. I have very strong kind of nostalgic memories towards this. Mm. This was one when did of, you first see this, Billy? Do you think? Uh, I would have been uh, probably about four or five. Oh, same or age as me. Six years Lovely. old. Yeah. And my mum and I. It was one of the two VHSs that we would regularly take out of the library uh, yeah. in Bedminster. And it was this and Dragonfire with the mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. So I have a certain affinity for season 24. And uh, but it was funny watching this because I've watched it so many times since, obviously. And I, I can't really connect the dots between like 
memories in my head of mm. having watched it. The only bits I really remember is the pool. Yeah. But I yeah. think that might have been because it was on the, it was on the cover, isn't it? VHS cover. Yeah. Mm. Um, what about you, Matt? Yeah, go on, Matt. Uh, I remember us having it taped off of probably UK Gold. Yeah, we did. Um, and that's really about it. How old do you think you were when you first saw oh, it? Oh, little. Titchy. Yeah. Titchy, titchy, yeah. Mm. And from then until now, I guess you've always hated it. Well, because <laughs> that was always the dynamic. Yeah. That was always the case. Mm. I loathed it with a passion. Mm. Probably my least favourite Doctor Who story. And now? And now, well, we watched it when the box set came yeah. out, season yeah. 24 set. Yeah. We watched the extended version. I was going to yeah, mm. mention that. And we watched it and we laughed at it and we thought, actually, mm. we quite enjoyed watching mm. this. This mm. was quite fun. And then, of course, we watched it the other night. Just, yeah. Um, again, and we watched it all the way through. Yeah, I said, let's just watch two episodes, and then we'd come back to it the following evening, yeah. maybe. Um, but we didn't. We sat and watched the whole lot yeah. in one go. Wow, yeah. I did and, the same as well. I, was, I didn't expect to be able to do that. It was very but. enjoyable. No. Yeah, yeah. I think I've enjoyed it now more in my latter years than when I was young. I, sure, I, I think that's it. I think because when you're younger, you sort of try and take it a bit more seriously, and you're like, this is shit. Yeah, and I think when you're older. <laughs> You can say, this is shit, but, you yeah. know, they're all having fun. Yeah, they are. They're having a good old time, aren't they? I think yeah. that season, it is Doctor Who does Panto. Yeah. It is. and But it's a weird sort of stepping stone in that it's sort of getting into more social commentary. Yeah. But it's also yeah, it is, yeah. camping it up to a massive degree. I mean, we'll go through what our viewers and listeners thought later, but the word that kept coming up, if you could, you know, search one word that appeared in basically every single tweet or Instagram message, it was camp, 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 camp. Really, yeah. And it is, like, yeah. hugely. But that whole team feels that way. Silv, he's a bit sinister in that story in certain mm -hmm. points. You get to see, you know, that darker side of him yeah, already. Really Even though there's only story two for him, mm. you know, and you think he's a bit si quite silly in Time mm. and the Rani after the post-generation. But, you know, that scene when he's there in the office, when they've, you know, locked him up, or, you know, and he gets the book out yeah. and, you know, and you see well, that, yeah, manip although, although that was manipulation, yeah. that was silly. you can sort of see, ah, well, the way that the character is going already yeah. at an early stage. And, yeah. and also that really good scene between him and Richard Bryars, where Richard Bryars is questioning him. Oh, and that's then good. Yeah, yeah. Is that their final conversation? Yeah, yeah, and then it flips and then he sort of interrogates yes, Bryars. That's really yeah. Very cleverly done, beautifully directed that mm. twist. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. very, very clever. Um, the first thing that stood out to me watching this, I think, was probably the production design, mm. it's probably the strongest aspect of the entire story. I yeah. mean, just from, I mean, obviously, you know, the, the, the setting is cool from a, from a writing perspective, but actually seeing Paradise Towers and its corridors and mm. its squares and its lifts and its basements and stuff, it's really nicely put together. Yeah, and especially um, like you've got that bridge, haven't it's you? Nice, yeah, yeah. And, which and, 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 allows and, and, for some really good shots. Yeah. The directing's really good. Elevated mm. sort of like levels like that yeah. don't really happen in classic no. Doctor no. Who. So when you see something like that, it immediately mm. piques your interest. And like even like if you compare it to Dragonfire, mm. which does have a little bit of that. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the big used, ice. Yeah, the ice. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not really that. Those levels aren't really used to the same no. effect. No. You can, you know, I'm not sure who directed this. Um, story, no, which is really bad. I probably have to. Have I, I was going to note it down, and I didn't because I'm hopeless. Uh, but there's a lot of like handheld camera stuff, yeah. where you know you've got shots looking down into mm. the square and stuff, and it's really, really great. But even like you know, I, okay, the pool in the sky that they end up at, yeah. is not the height of luxury. In terms it's of not. Is it? no. it's, it's a disappointment, it's isn't it? It's the yeah. shittest yeah. pool <laughs> you could possibly go to. But they would have probably done better if they'd have gone to a swimming bath somewhere, <laughs> probably. rather than some swimming posh baths. blue. Levin's the house south swimming baths, yeah. Yeah, yeah, probably. But having said that, they, they do such a good job with making it cramp and dank and dark that when you actually get to the pool mm. yeah. in part three or whenever it is, mm. it does sort of feel like a, oh, we're somewhere else at last. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. less claustrophobic, yeah, it's less true. sort of enclosed. Mm. Um, uh, the, the, the cleaning robot in the pool, oh, yeah. Yeah. do we think maybe should have been closer in design to the cleaners that we see. Because uh, to me, when I was it's younger, so different. It's so exactly, different. Exactly. Yeah. I just yeah. thought... It just seems out of place. Robot octopus or exactly. Place. Yeah. I just thought it was a monster. I didn't think it was a robot or it was a pool For cleaning, cleaning robot. It pool. was yeah. part yeah. of the whole ensemble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
But yeah, it doesn't look like he's designed. Well, I mean, then again, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's designed to clean. No, yeah. but, my, no but neither do the other things. I don't think. No, they got like. They're all got designed drills. to kill. I mean, what are you going to clean with that bloody thing? I mean, <laughs> no, I don't know. Put up a shelf. <laughs> True. Put up a shelf. Um, some of the barrels used for the set dressing in the Kang's lair. Do they turn into Daleks? Sadly not. <laughs> Special weapons Daleks. But they do have very faded or painted over Wayland yutani logos on it. Oh really? Because from... they were all borrowed from Alien. Wow. They're just Gosh. a few examples My of God. sort of set dressing that gets oh, mixed yeah. through the 80s from the wow. Alien those, films. Those barrels are more famous than the cast. Oh. They're pre- I mean, le- pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. Um, Hang on, saying that there's some good actors in that story. There those, are some good those actors. Those women, those bloody cannibal lesbians, they, uh, I tell you what, yeah. they are very good actresses. Yeah. They are fabulous. I think they're probably my... I think that's where the story peaks for me. Mm. It kind of hits that point where it goes, if everybody was sort of on this level, level of psychopathy, yeah. Yeah. you know, I'd sort of understand it a bit more. But the yeah. fact that there are still residents that are acting like nothing is going wrong mm. yeah. and haven't resorted to eating their neighbour, yeah. to yeah. me is a bit like, but you're not really going fully ahead with the concept, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. either everybody needs to be like that yeah. or, yeah. you know, whatever. I mean, I, I think... And part of the issue that I have always have with it was the Kangs, really. Mm. Is that you, they're so much older than they're they so should much be. Older, you, yeah. I mean, are they supposed to be teenagers? Well, I, I think, think they're so. supposed to be like sort of uh, what, like 12, Six, 14 years yeah, old, maybe I thought even 16. Yeah. Something like that, See, Annie said, well, no, they're like adults, but they've because they've mm. been living there in this. Society sort of just, without yeah, any. Uh, yeah. With no education, education and stuff, yeah. they're, they're sort of all a bit backwards. Mm. Um, well, I suppose which, I can, which I can buy. They're a bit yeah. dull. Uh, they're all a bit dull, yeah. Uh, but then the stuff that really annoys me is like the costumes. Like the costumes are, they're so designed, you know, they look yeah. like a uniform rather mm. than here are a ragtag bunch of yeah. kids who yeah, have, yeah. oh, okay, well, it's I've like got the, a red the, hoodie, I've got a red jacket, so yeah. I'm a red can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, yeah. no, we've got perfectly matching yes. outfits. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not all quite hair, beautifully coiffed and, yeah. and everything. Quite, yeah, yeah, and that's the trouble, yeah. Because I think, yeah. really, at the, you know, this could have been a really good sort of Lord of the Flies, mm. yeah. you know, mm. really dirty, scrappy kids. Yeah. Um, and you just don't quite get that. Well, yeah. It's got Mark Strickson's ex-wife in it as well. That is mm. true. I did yeah. make a note of that mm. yeah. uh, somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, they're kind of, initially, I suppose maybe when you're a kid as well, they have got that cringe factor yes. to them as they an ensemble. Yeah. But then as you get through and you're like, well, if you kind of get with the vernacular and you get with the fact that they're, mm. they are kids from another planet and they've been brought up in this weird you know, environment, yeah. you kind of get it a bit more, mm. yeah. maybe. Mm. Um, and, you know, high fashion, ice hot. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, that, actually. Yeah, all yeah. that stuff is really cool. Yeah. And it just adds to the world building and, and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but I did have a, 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 a sort of query about the, the whole backstory to Paradise Towers. So, obviously, I mean, what's his name? I've written it down here somewhere. Uh, Croagnon. Yeah. Right. So he builds Paradise Towers. Yeah. yeah. And his MO... It was the same with Miracle City when he built it, was I don't like flesh polluting my art. Yeah. I yeah. don't want people living in the spaces no. that I've built. Yeah. So the parents of the Kangs drove him into the basement mm-hmm. and somehow separated his mind from his body rather than just killing him outright. Mm. I don't know quite how that happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somehow his mind has been sustained in, in what? What Two is neon that? lights. Yeah. I was going to say, so what is that thing supposed to be? Is it just that it was well, supposed to be a big monster I, that wasn't I, quite realised Matt had a really camera? good idea. Go on. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, it, we'll get onto that uh, bit later. Uh, okay. But, okay. Go on. Um, I think if you look at the behind the scenes pictures, mm. it is more like a computer or a machine. Oh, is it? But okay. there's lots of smoke you in the episode. Yeah, you yes. can't see bugger all, you just see these bloody so, neon lights. I thought they were. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought that was very good. I always thought they were supposed to be his eyes. Yeah. Like think, glaring out of the darkness. Yeah. I think they are supposed to be like eyes, aren't they? Like, but it's like, it's like, so how is this man's life essence being sustained in these two fluorescent neon lights? Mm. I don't, you know, it, it, there's a disconnect between what yeah. the script is implying yeah. or getting across yeah. and what they've actually been able to afford, mm. which doesn't actually stretch to the rest of the story because the cleaners, they're a couple of hundred quid off of being perfect. Mm. They're pretty good yeah. for what they are. Uh, apart from the fact they can get knocked out by a blanket and a crossbow <laughs> yeah. bolt. Apart from that, um, yeah. you know, everything is sort of, 
set up to be great and there's a couple of things that it really nails mm. but then there's a few things like this entity in the basement that it yeah. doesn't quite get right but yeah. I, I can only assume that's a budgetary thing so I can't hold it Perhaps. against yeah. it too much you know? yeah I mean I've read the novelization of this and mm. I quite enjoyed it but I can't recall that it went into any particular detail yeah. about that and you no. think that that would be something that mm. okay, I've got a novel. I can go in. Go you know, to you could have had a now. chapter yeah. about yeah. You know, the, the, <laughs> the, the the uprising. To yeah, get rid of him. Yeah, um, but here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So a bit of a mystery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. yeah let's you know, I, I'd love to know what the intention was yeah. for what that was supposed to be in the basement. Yeah. It's, it's the only thing that sort of disconnects it for mm, me yeah. personally. But mm. there we go. I mean, maybe they thought, maybe there was dialogue in the script mm. and then whilst they were filming it, they thought, Christ, at this rate, if Richard <laughs> Bryars tries to get this bit <laughs> oh of exposition out, God. we're going to be here till next week. So we've just cut this. Hmm. Do you want to talk about Richard Bryars? Bryars? Yeah. Because up until the point where he becomes Coragnon, he's very he's good. Great. I think he's fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's absolutely no reason why anybody up until that point should say that he's miscast no. or bad in this. No, story. no, he's I very totally good. agree. Yeah. And then he becomes Coragnon. Mm. Yeah. And then you're like, Ooh. the word overact comes <laughs> to mind. Yeah, the, the word sucking the scenery comes yeah. to mind because he. Well, I mean, I read that apparently he was kind of doing what he thought was the right thing to mm. do. Mm. And JNT was giving him evils across the studio yeah. floor. To ham it up. Yeah, yeah. it's like, what do you expect him to do? Mm. You know, with the dialogue you're giving him, what have I got written down here? You and I will now destroy him. <laughs> it's like, well, like, what is he supposed to do with yeah. that? <laughs> Obviously he's gonna act like a dick. Like, you know, yeah. it's, it's yeah. just part of the what's written on the paper. Yeah. Now. We've got an extra person reviewing this episode tonight. Oh, yeah. Uh, as well as Jonathan. Oh, yeah. Because we watched this mm. with our mother. Magnificent. <laughs> and every time she had a comment, I noted it down in my Beautiful. notes. So this is what she had to say. Now, I think we ought to put about... this into context mm. first. Mm -hmm. Because obviously we, us, you, Annie and I, were watching it properly. And Gizmo. And Gizmo. Uh, but <laughs> but what mum, did Gizmo think? Gizmo mum, No, you fell asleep. Oh, okay. <laughs> But Mum was doing a puzzler, wasn't she? At the yeah. Same. So I she, mean, I don't so, think that's really. No, but I think they need to know because she wasn't watching it, you know, avidly. She was like this, and occasionally she'd hear a line, and her ears would prick up. And yeah. I, I'm, I'll give you a little comment. So I think they need to know okay. that. Anyway, so, let's so go. she wasn't paying attention. For but, us, but there were some good. Because if she lines. had been paying attention, gosh, she would have been hooked to it. Like I'm it sure yeah. she would have been riveted to the screen. <laughs> well, so, she did say that she preferred it to some of the other ones she's seen recently. Wasn't yeah, because she's so, been watching a lot with the kids. Yeah, and she, and she, she said, well, like she put, I put it here. Um, this one wasn't uh, as shit as the last one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all right. I've seen worse. That was <laughs> her overall, yeah. her overall comment. Stay um, that on the DVD but, cover. Yeah. yeah, but let's. This is what she had to say about Richard Briers, um, <laughs> which was. F so she went. Who is he supposed to be? Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> She's hit the nail on the head. Um, and then. When Richard Bryars was talking to Cragnon in the basement, oh, oh, now what oh, are you oh, doing oh, there? Oh, my, my, oh, oh, daddy's here. Yeah, yeah, no, daddy. Yeah. Uh, she paused. She watched it. She paused. looked up. Yeah, she looked up, watched it, and then turned to us and said, "Isn't it pathetic?" <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I mean, uh, that's a pretty good approximation of Paradise uh, Towers. Yeah. Though, between those two comments, I think we've got a decent. And, and then, there's some of the good ones as well, though. And then once he finally became Coragnon mm. and he gave arguably the best performance of his entire <gasps> career, uh, Mum said, uh, "What is he drugged up?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is the problem with him. What is that makeup? job supposed to be mm. because he comes out of it sort of looking part cyber converted, yes which yeah is glittery isn't it silver, silver. yeah but yeah if they'd, if they'd really gone to town on him and basically gone okay richard uh you are a dead body that is rotting as it's standing yeah. but you've got the uh personality but your moustache has grown wider. your moustache has <laughs> got wider but we'll, we'll just you become less like hitler which you is become weird. less hitler yeah. which is weird because you want to kill everybody but you have to stomp around with this other person's uh, personality inside of you, but you're rotting, right? 
They could have done something really cool with his makeup. Well, they could have made him really pale and put red things under his eyes and he would have looked a bit... <clears throat> so I had a different yeah, idea. Matt's got a, I think this is, this is where they missed a trick here. This is really good, I think. Because the whole thing is the cleaners are going around mm. snatching people. Yeah. Uh, feeding Croagnon. Yeah. Mm. And I didn't really understand this. Like, well, why would this machine yeah, need, need to eat, eat, yeah, eat people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, what they should have done is, they should have done it like Frankenstein. Mm. And he should have been using the bits and pieces of, of all the bodies to, to build himself, himself a new mm. body. Yeah. And use Richard Breyer's head as like the final piece. Mm. And then when he has the thing come down on him, you know, his spirit transfers or whatever. Yeah. And then at the end you have more of a... Yeah, it's Frankenstein's monster. monster. Bit of a Kang, bit of uh, the old a Rezzy's, Rezzy's leg with a slipper, slipper on. That's and it would have been a bit silly, but it would have been... It would have made more dark. sense, I think. It would have made more sense. Yeah. It would have been slightly macabre, <clears throat> but it would have been, you know... Do I frighten you? <laughs> <laughs> it's all a bit OTT. One boob at that on one side. <laughs> <laughs> and a heel on one yeah. leg. It's, like, it's, it's fine until it gets to that point. And then, and then you just think, oh God, Richard. And you've got to think of the people in the gallery going, what the fuck are we yeah. doing? Yeah. Up until that point, I'm sure everybody I was could be, enjoying I could themselves. be working on EastEnders now. Mm. I turned EastEnders down. Yeah. Literally. Um, well, I, mum said overall, she said, mm. oh, wonderful. And Richard Briers needs a standing ovation. <laughs> I, I mean, to, to have stayed in the studio for that length of time to finish it, he probably does need a standing mm, yeah. ovation, to be fair. But we but, don't just- but Hang on, just interrupt you. Go on, Johnny. But he took it very seriously though, didn't he? Yeah. I think he said, I had no intention of overplaying it up. or sending it up. No. Yeah. I mean, he read what was yeah, in front of him yeah, and, he so. and he did what he, what he was told yeah, to do. You know. um, it's, not, it's JNT's fault for not stepping in himself. Yeah. He can give him and daggers. The director. the director could have said, well, look, come but on, But that's Richard, fine, but the director is... was obviously happy with what he was doing. Mm. So if John had a, an issue with it, he should have talked really? to him in yeah, the studio yeah. and gone, I think you're taking the piss, mate. Yeah. Yeah. But he didn't. Yeah. And so what's, you know, it's not Richard Bride's fault. No. You know, it, but I can understand that this story kind of goes down in people's estimations mm. as yeah. a result that of this doesn't performance. Help with that. Yeah, yeah. But beyond Richard Briers, yeah. who is fabulous <clears throat> until the Kragnon bit, and then it becomes, you know, Panto, but that's mm. fine as well. Uh, Tilda and Tabby, mm. of oh, course, yeah. are mm. fantastic. Yeah. And yeah. they are so... They're so grim. Yeah. Mm. My only sort of not quibble with them, but the only note I would have given is I kind of feel like the cannibal bit is overplayed slightly. Oh, do you think? In the early going. Oh, because, really? Because, you know, we've got that shot. I don't know what it was like for you, Johnny, when you watched it yeah. first. But I was kind of... There's that first shot of the d dinner table where, you, you know, you get the suspicion that something's wrong because yeah. there's bones yeah. on the... But I was sort of thinking maybe on a on a tiny monitor screen in the corner of the room, you wouldn't have noticed. I, well, I just tell you, I didn't realise no. there was anything, when I first watched it when yeah. I was a kid, I obviously I was only four, but I didn't realise anything was up until mm. they put the bloody net over right. Mel and the pitch, and I thought, oh crikey, what's happened to these two nice old ladies? It wasn't until much later on I watched it again, oh, I realised yeah. the cannibal thing. I didn't think I would have yeah. realised that anyway. I was too small, I was no, too but, young. But that's, that's, good, that's good to hear. I, I mean, watching <laughs> it, I thought that the little, clues mm. are subtle enough. I yeah, thought anyway. I don't like know. the bones like you know, unless it had a human skull in it, well yeah. I'm oh, gonna yes. necessarily know that that's But the thing is be uh, human They're skeleton. kind of overplaying it slightly as well. I mean right. I don't know which one it is in the blue, if it's Tilda or Tabby. But she's basically licking her lips at Mel. Yeah. Mm. I mean, that, that might also be because she fancies her. Mm. But she's basically, you know, going, you know, the whole time that she's in the flat. Yeah. Mm. And I just kind of felt like that cliffhanger, but obviously, Johnny, at the time, mm. he didn't know. No. So that cliffhanger did, would have had the effect of... It would. Oh my God, it's they're trying to eat her. It's a, it's a good cliffhanger. It's a great cliffhanger. That, I like that cliffhanger. But that's, that's great, because it kind of dismisses the point I'd made here where it's a bit too obvious, and that that cliffhanger would have hit her mm. more. It, yeah. But then I've watched this story like but, yeah, a dozen times. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's not going to have the same effect on me. Um, but it's good to hear that it did on you. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, go, I guess that goes to prove that it still, it still can mm. do it. You know? uh, I've noticed here that the budgie... That's mm. in their flat is probably the best actor in this episode. <laughs> but I mean, considering the fact you can't see it, that's yeah. quite that's quite high praise. Um, that. uh, did you want to eat one of those 
Cookies. Oh yeah, they're cakes. so good. I always wanted to eat one of those cookies. Yeah, I, I wanted, wanted to eat one of those cookies. But what is she doing with that crumpet? Stick it in a toaster. Yeah. This is space year yeah. twenty one ninety seven. Why are you putting <laughs> yeah. it over? Oh, that lovely bloody... cream on the top of it as well. I know. Oh, it's keeps spooning it's that. Yeah. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Mel. I, we should probably talk about Mel in a bit, but she absolutely walks into that, and it, you know, mm. she kind of deserves it for yeah. walking into a stranger's flat like that and thinking I mean come on they clearly want to eat you yeah, yeah, what yeah. are you mm, doing why did, mm. you, why did you come back yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. do you know what yeah actually those cookies were so good yeah. I mean I'm she did stuff her about... face yeah she did yeah, yeah. She did. oh hang on a minute one oh, last thing about the Tilda and Tabby mm. Tilda uh, and Tabby are they lesbians are they married and uh, do they only eat women because they're lesbians now I'll tell you what I thought. I didn't think I had no idea they were supposed to be lesbians. Mm. I, uh, this was a shock to me. I was mm. shocked. Uh, I had no idea. And then suddenly, oh, they're lesbians, are they? Why? Because just because they live together. Why can't they be two nice old dears who happen to be cannibals that live together? <laughs> <laughs> they came together over there. Yeah, over shared, their mutual shared over love, their mutual love flesh. of yeah. human Each flesh other's... and muff. <laughs> That's why they're bound together for life. Um, I don't. I mean. <laughs> I was watching it today and I was Muffin like... Muffin Mel, I'm going to have to get that on a t-shirt, please. <laughs> I, was... I only eat two things, Muffin Mel. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Dear. I was watching it today and I thought, all right, I'm going to look at the text. I had the subtitles on. Mm. Is there anything in here that I can equate to them being mm. gay? Mm. And I, I couldn't find anything no. overt in yeah. the text. I didn't think so. So is this just a case of people shipping it for decades? that it's just become part of the fabric of Doctor Who fandom, mm. that Tilda and Tabby are, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you wouldn't want another cannibal going down on you because... <laughs> right, all oh, right, okay. <laughs> Not um, for listening, are you? Right, right, case. You can't put that on the video. <laughs> <laughs> We don't watch the reviews on the internet, Johnny, really? believe me. Because um, his mum watches this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it, it's all right. Um, okay. I will say, after they get eaten by the garbage disposal unit, which mm. is, a, is a funny bit, but I always thought, how has a cleaner got up into that little... Because <laughs> it yeah. is a cleaner's arse. Yeah, it's yeah. supposed it's to like, be. Okay, yeah. so what's that uh, It's going? not a great ending. Like, no. Fallen, no. Really. no, it's That's not. That's a bit disappointing. I'd like something a bit more, I don't know. I can't remember if it's Tilda or, Tilda or Tabby that gets eaten second. Yeah. But it's just a shot of them getting strangled from behind. Yeah. yeah. And then you cut back to Mel and Pex comes over and That's you right. hear them screaming in the distance and that's it. And, that's yeah. and it's like, well, a little bit more would have been nice to sell yeah. it. But yeah. if you haven't got the time or the resources. No. I also kind of understand that. Russell's Doctor Who that little bin would have gone burp, burp. Yeah, yeah, and, would, um, yeah. and we would have saluted it um, <laughs> nice scene between the chief caretaker and Maddie who is an interesting character yeah. she's a resi that apparently isn't eating people or muff I don't know <laughs> no. Um, uh, no, she looks, she she looks still yeah. have you seen oh. that extra? that is weird yeah, what is yeah, all yeah. that the about the scene where they Did give it? each other the eyes it's creepy God, it's awful. No wonder they cut it. Yeah, no wonder it's terrible. Cool, didn't tell Onslow. No, I know. He's dead now, unfortunately. No. Yeah. I think she's probably dead now, isn't she? I'm not sure, possibly. Mm. But there's a nice bit anyway <laughs> uh, <laughs> where the chief caretaker and, and uh, Maddie have a chat and he's basically like, you know, if, you, uh, if you're quiet about this, you yeah. can stay here. Mm. And it's like, it adds to that layer of seediness in this place yeah, that people yeah. are just out for themselves mm. and nobody ever leaves their apartment and yeah. all that sort of stuff. It just... You know, the, the the thing I would say about this, in, in defence of anybody who thinks this is rubbish just from the outset and, you know, would never think about giving it a second go, is that, sure, it's silly and campy on the surface, mm. but if you want to, yeah. you know, have a go at it, there are layers to it, mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot in there to sort of take out. Yeah. And that's just one example. Is that, that scene could have very easily been cut. Yeah. Really, because it doesn't help Maddie's uh, case where she becomes a goodie in the end. Uh, and no, I, I think, you know? the, I think mm. this is the thing, isn't it? This, like, like you said, it's all in the script. And I think this is a story where the script could have been interpreted in several ways. Mm. The way that it ultimately was, which was over the top, tongue mm. in cheek, pantomime, it could have gone much darker, darker and probably. much more yeah. sinister yeah. and you know the old dears didn't need to be nice no. uh, like uh old dears they could have been more creepy i mean obviously yeah. it wouldn't have worked so much because mel would have yes. immediately have gone so up here but i don't know how she didn't with the state of play as it is at the moment yeah. like, how did she not find that slightly suspicious but, but... yeah I, I i think on a script level there's not really no an issue there i feel like visually in terms of the production design again which i think is probably the strongest part of this 
it's going for that dark, grungy, mm. realist yeah. sort of thing. But then in some of the performances and in some of the costumes, mm -hmm. it is going for yeah. Panto. There's a contra there's a yeah. contrast, isn't there? Mm. There's a conflict of interests yeah. between the two, I think. Ever so slightly, yeah. Um, I, I what, other, what other notes did I have? I uh, think I had some we stuff talk, about we said something about Mel, didn't we? We talked about Mel being very theatrical in this story. Yeah, like um, I mean, I mean we what said do you this, expect when we, you have? Bonnie I mean, this is that. it. Oh, I, mean, I mean, we've said this. I like God Bonnie, bless but her. in all of her stories, I think. But excellent scream, end of part th uh, uh, three, when she, was the three? End of part two, if I when she gets, um, you know, the, yeah. the, the pitchfork thing. Uh, and beautifully time. links into the theme. Mm. Do you reckon she was... It's good. I, I'm sure I she, she was, was yeah, told she during her audition she had to scream in the key in of the... the yeah, it was yeah. very good, very impressive. They changed the key Sting. between Trial of a Time Lord and... Mm. Did they? Just for her. Wow. Yeah. No, it's, I thought she did that Fair very well, but she's a bit theatrical. She's a bit like you know that sort of thing, isn't yeah, it? You know, and it, I it, didn't know. You know, even even someone like Peck, who is mm. you know he's slightly over the top because the story is over the top. Mm. But even he is slightly more subdued in yeah, the way. He, yeah. There's a slightly. But do you think that's because he's got a little bit of grime on him and he's a bit torn? And then Mel comes into this, and you're like. Who's this fucking theatre bunny that's just wandered mm. in? And she's like pristine yeah. and she holds herself really well. Yeah. And I think this is the point where if I was script editor or producer of this programme, I would have seen her running about with all those characters and thought, anyone else is more interesting in the TARDIS yeah. than you. Because, mm. you know, like Ace obviously comes along in Dragonfire mm. and she's got an edge to her. Yeah. Yeah. And all it, the companions well, have a slight edge, well, but Mel has got it. nothing I mean, to her. I could easily mm. see the Doctor not having a companion in this story and then picking up a Kang and taking a Kang with For him sure. mm. and being like an ace. Because, Absolutely. you know, there's not, you mm. know, not masses of difference. Um, you know, same with Ray, isn't it? Because mm. Ray was in the running. To be Didn't Mel have a funny comment about Mel? Uh, there was a comment, I can't remember who it was about, but Mum went, oh, I like her eye makeup. <laughs> <laughs> I think, it it Mel. I think it was Mel. Yeah, I think it was Mel. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I just watching this. She's the only sort of outlier in terms of performance. I know everybody else is camping it up, and everybody else is being super panto. But for Bonnie Langford to still be mm. yeah. sort of pulling ahead of everybody yeah. else in that way, I, I mean. There is a revisionist thing of Doctor Who companions going, when you kind of go back and you go, oh no, yeah, no, that was great, and that was great, and that was great, and altogether a fantastic companion. I've never really seen anybody do that for Mel. Mm -hmm. And it's when you watch stories like Paradise Towers, where it's separate from the whole Trial of a Time Lord saga, and it's, you know, uh, sort of outside of her meeting the Seventh Doctor and then leaving. Yeah. You really only have two stories to see her isolated as a companion within her own right. Yeah. And there's... Nothing mm. there. Yeah, and I think especially when you compare her from telly and then listen to her big finish mm. stories, because mm. I mean, obviously she's had a fantastic turn in EastEnders, hasn't she? Recently? Yeah, she's I mean, but Bonnie Langford's a fantastic actress. And she's a very actor. good actress. Mm. She mm. was brilliant in it for the mm. bits that I saw. And then, yeah, like you compare the two styles, her Doctor Who audio acting to telly. And yeah, on audio, she mm. feels like, okay, this is a normal person talking and blah, 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 blah. Compared to, oh gosh, Doctor, what's this? Mm. Oh, I really hope we get to da 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 da. Mm. Come on, let's go. Da, da. Yeah, and it mm. is. It's like mm. it's the knee slapping mm. thing, but you know. But she's in a children's TV series. And I think that's it. As far as she was concerned, mm. it was a children's TV show. And now she's making audios for neckbeards. So she tries to <laughs> kind of, she tries to bring her acting down to a slightly more mature level. Yeah, and I can I can understand that. Yeah, but also. You know that doesn't make it palatable to watch no. sort of now. <coughs> yeah. Like she is the most sort of okay. She'll get t the piss taken out of her on Harry Hill's TV burp. Yeah, out of all the companions. And mm. then Richard Bryars turns up at the end, and, and, like, oh! and then Bonnie's like, "Gosh!" And I thought I was uh, yeah. Good Jesus. Yeah. I don't think it's it's, it's it's just a different style of acting, isn't it? It's yeah. not even so much overacting. Mm. It's just well, theatrical acting. She is isn't acting it? stage the, acting. Yeah, she's doing stage the acting, mm. and they're doing that's TV acting. That's what she's acting. doing. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. That's that's a fair enough thing to say. Um, yeah, I mean, overall though, that, that this this story, it has these layers that you can go down into. But I can also understand that there might be people that have a certain barrier they have to get over for Doctor Who. Mm. Be that Mel, 
well, you know, to, uh, to be fair, of all the companions, if I was like, well, you know, I want to watch a, you know, a good, strong companion-related story, there's nothing to be found mm. with Mel. Yeah. Um, do you want something with a little bit of intrigue? It's there sort of beneath the surface. Do you want something with some really great cliffhangers? You know, I mean, part three, even with Sylv pulling all those faces, getting strangled, yeah. he gives John Pertwee a run yeah, for his you, money. I thought mm. the same thing. With yeah. those gurning faces. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there, there, but there is stuff there. And I just think you need to be in the right headspace to accept it. Yeah. You know, you, you can't go into it cynically. It's one because... of those, you have to be in the mood for it. Yeah. And there's plenty of Doctor Who stories mm. where... I feel like that. I've watched stories that I love and I've not really been in the mood for it and I've not enjoyed it as much. And then, you know, the opposite. If mm. it's a story that I don't particularly like, I've sat down and watched it and gone, actually, mm. I've really enjoyed that. Mm. And, you know, it's happened with this yeah. story mm. both times we've watched it recently. Mm. And I did sort of think to myself coming into it this second time, Mm. Uh, I sort of thought, oh, I probably won't enjoy it. I probably it so, won't yeah. enjoy it so yeah. much, but I still did. Mm. Um, and I think it's probably just that thing of I am now older, mm. and I can sort of think mm. to myself, I don't need to take this quite so seriously. And there the volume helped. And the volume helped. That probably yeah. would have helped quite a bit. Uh, Johnny, what do you make of the bamboo brolly? Can we have ah, the a bamboo thirty brolly. minute essay yeah, on that? Yeah, exposition on the bamboo brolly. So the yeah. bamboo brolly we see only in this story, obviously, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, no brolly in time and the Rani, and obviously in the next story, Delta, we have the the question mark umbrella, mm. uh, which is um, hanging up there. first scene. Oh, <laughs> um, I assume it's just um, in the interim whilst it's being created. I imagine mm, by the TARDIS, it yeah. pops out of the thing on the console yeah, at the Sonic, and, and then there we go. Um, but yeah. Nice little prop. Is it the same body? Or? Yeah, I was thinking this. Um, I don't know if it's the... I would imagine it's the same... Um, yeah, I would imagine it was the same yeah. body from the from the, the brolly shop. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the brolly maker uh, shop, uh, yeah. And, and am I right in <clears throat> thinking that... It was, was it Robert Harrop that did the... The, uh, the Sontarans and stuff? Mm. For the new the series? The new series, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure... He designed the question mark Broly. Wow. And he did lots of stuff for the McCoy era. Wow. Like the Candyman and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean... So he, he cut his teeth on right. Sills' Doctor Who and then ended up working on Jodie's Doctor and Who. And that, that is mm. the thing, I think, that it, it, even if the stories or the performances or whatever aren't your cup of tea with the Seventh Doctor era, you can really appreciate the production design. Mm. Because I know, you know, the whole thing has always been Doctor Who's been made on a shoestring budget, but there's something about season 24 and, and season 25 and 26, where you think, have they found out a way to sort of put money in the right places? Yeah. Because mm. you get like, the Destroyer. Mm. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. you get, Fantastic. you know, the sort of, uh, you know, the Tech Traps. The Tech Traps, the, yeah, traps, yeah, really the Michael Bay-esque, you know, Remembrance of the Dark, yeah. all the yeah, explosions yeah. and all mm. the new Dalek props Fantastic. and stuff. Yeah. You think, so there must have been some kind of a cash injection to keep this thing mm. going. Mm. Yeah. And, and it's used well on screen. You know, mm. obviously, and yeah. like you know, the the way that Paradise Towers is laid out and the production design for it, it's it's really the best part of the whole story. You mm. know, that there's the the setup for Paradise Towers, the backstory, but the actual way that the thing looks and feels sells it enough for yeah. me mm. to kind of ignore all the rest of the stuff that happens around yeah. it and and Mel. Mm. Mm. No, yeah. I agree, and I think reiterating what you said, I think Silv's very good in it. Yeah, I think Silv's. Yeah, um, he, he's. Uh... Found his feet, I think, quite early. Quite early yeah. on. Yeah. You know, I like the stuff where he doffs his hat to the whatever the metal <coughs> thing is. Yeah, yeah. All that business, yeah. pointing with his brolly at things. He's just there's so much he does. He's so yeah. expressive with himself. Mm. He's not boring to watch. Uh, yeah. And I think the other MVP of this story mm. is Kef McCulloch. Oh yeah. I love. Ooh, mm. you're not such a fan of his score in this. I commend him for the fact that I found out he had a week yeah. to do this. Yes, score. he did. But. Da 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 da. Oh, I mean, wh when you hear it the fourth time, yeah, I it mean, gets that, a bit that, laboured. But fair enough. I I will I will accept that. But, but I think there's some good bits. Like, there's some good mm. bits. The, the whole bit with the yeah. uh, with the rule book. Yeah. That mm -hmm. like little Muzak version of the theme. The theme. The theme. I mean, it's yeah. one of them running through a corridor yeah. and they play. Yeah, you hear it then. It's good. Is it just if it has the Doctor Who theme in it? It gets five stars yes. for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, it. we all said it, didn't we? we did. You, me, and yeah. Annie all went, oh, it's oh, nice it's when nice they use the Doctor Who theme. So. Shame they can't do it anymore. Honestly, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean. It's uh, such a shame. I wonder if that's been sorted out. I think there's been a they lot should. of. It's just insanity. I think there's been a lot it. of, let's oh. see where the rights are yeah. with that and let's try yeah. and get them back. I think Russell. now that Russell's come in and has really sort of stretched his arms out mm. and said, right, let's put all our eggs back into one basket. Yeah. And mm. let's see, you know, it, it should be all under one, one umbrella. Yeah, you know, of not not mm. all will they because mm, 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 yeah. that's all a load of pain in the ass. Yeah. Um I mean hopefully they'll get the rights back for the T V movie and we might be able to see nineteen ninety six Paul McGann on things again. Rather let's than see. that same night of the Doctor picture. Oh well then uh, now they've got Power of the Doctor I, Buzzcock. I, I Buzzcock Buzz 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 I would have brought a big Finnish artist down and said just ask him to do anything for you so you've yeah. got 900 mm. different angles of the same thing and you can keep using it for yeah. big finish every, every facial expression possible. <laughs> can you do uh, half an orgasm? <laughs> you might be able to use that for me. Uh, let's see what the viewers and listeners thought mm. of this episode. Okay. I'll start off. Uh, Andy, it feels like it's a clash of tones that don't really work. The storyline and setting suggest a grim, dark tale, but it's played like a camp, silly kids TV show that should have aired at 4 p.m. rather than 7.30. Wasted potential. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I... I, 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 I do, I do yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just think now I'm old enough to just go, fine. Yeah. Mm. This, is, this is what it is. You, you know. kind of brush it off a bit more, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I mean, I'm entertained watching it. And like watching the space pirates, yeah. where I want to die, <laughs> yeah. or, un or underworld, where yeah. it's just boring. It's just so boring mm, yeah. that I'm just like, oh, you know, underworld is just unpleasant to look at. Mm. Galaxy mm. Four or Galaxy mm, Four, yeah. which Terrible. is so boring. Yeah, Terrible. but would you have put this up at that level before? This? I wouldn't have done. No, no, Johnny no. wouldn't have, of no. course. No, no. <clears throat> you sort of. I always thought of you. I reckon Matt would have done. Oh yeah, I would have put it right yeah. down there. Yeah. I would have said it was yeah, yeah. right, right yeah. down the bottom yeah. with those lot. But mm -hmm. actually, now I think honestly, no. there's worse things. Mm. Chlamydia. <laughs> go on. What, what, what have you got on your uh, first Ben says, not my favourite. I find that the tone of the script feels different to the tone of the actual episode. I feel the script wanted this story to be more mysterious. When filming it, they decided to make it much more of a pantomime, mm -hmm. which is sort of what we said in places. Mm. Johnny. Uh, Anyone on here? Uh, yeah, yeah, first well, right. one. First okay, one. Phil. <coughs> Phil says, <coughs> excuse me. He says, never a particular fave of mine, but the extended edit on the Blu-ray makes a huge difference, adding lots of detail. Mm. It's so unusual, camp, dark, silly, and unlike any other story. But then that's exactly what season 24 does. You can almost hear the gear shifting as the show changes direction. Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't watched that, that full edit. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Mm. And I know you were talking about the Kef McCulloch music and how, you know, it's not great mm. in parts. Have you heard the original score? No, but I would really like to. It's on the Blu-ray. Yeah. You can listen to it. It is like <laughs> shitting in someone's ears. It is so bad. It is appalling. Yeah, it's not good. I it love is, it. It's not good. It is just like it is like someone has got a Casio keyboard. Yeah. yeah. Doesn't know how to play the piano, and it's just like making little noise. Uh, yeah. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, no, and you're really. like, oh, it sounds like something off an Atari 2600. It's oh, so dear. bad. It's I will have appalling. to give it a go at some point. Yeah. Uh, James... I mean, we couldn't watch the whole episode. No, because we couldn't. I think episode one has the full <coughs> score. And we watched so much of it. Oh, we're just no. like, That's enough now. And it just feels empty. Yeah. It's just really, re I mean, no wonder they sacked him. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, to have done it so close to, yeah. like, the fact that you only gave your it, actual writer mm. a week to it, do it. It must be a producer's and a director's worst nightmare oh, to be word. like, Okay, this guy is off doing his own thing. Okay, right, it'll come in and it'll be fine. And then hearing that, oh my, oh my god, god this is oh. yeah, this isn't even just like oh, it needs a bit of work. This is totally unusable. This doesn't work at all. Yeah, yeah. terrible. Uh, James says, I think the high camp makes it really brilliantly nightmarish, which is mm, a kind of a quality. Yeah. yeah, it's a quality to it, especially with with Tilda and Tabby, where you mm. kind of think, actually, yeah, that is the yeah. feeling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. These quite normal people are just hideously awful mm. yeah and it feels kind of quaint and cozy but then there's something in it that just is slightly skewed Sinister, off and slightly yeah. wrong yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and i think that's quite good because you know if you look at like serial killers and stuff in real life 
you know, so many of them aren't found out because mm. they mm. seem so normal yes. on the outset and they're mm. so charismatic. Yeah. And you're like, oh, well, that was the last person I would have thought, thought would yeah. do something like that. Yeah. And who would you least suspect but two old lesbians living down the corridor? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Sarah says, top notch fun. Uh, top notch fun. Top notch, top notch fun. Uh, I love Thasmin, but those old dears are the lesbian representation we really need. Oh, there we go. Uh, I'm, not, I'm still not convinced they are lesbian. <laughs> I, I, I didn't think you would be. Uh, right, I'll do this one. John says, I had heard only bad things about it until I got the season 24 box set. Honestly, thought it was cracking. Lots of fun, camp and scary, perfect Doctor Who. More proof that. Fan wisdom is to be ignored at all costs. Oh, oh so yeah. stop listening to this podcast then. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Ian says, much like late 80s Doctor Who, a brilliant and substantial concept, a little let down by some elements of the execution. However, I rather love it. I clearly remember watching it on broadcast as an eight-year-old. Tilda, Tabby and the Cleaners gave me nightmares for weeks. Mm. That's what you want to hear. Mm. Now, it, it, that, well, that, they had an effect on you, didn't they, Johnny? Did they? T Tilda and Tabby. Oh well, yeah, you've always said this. I'm not a lesbian. Oh, okay, right. scared of lesbians. <laughs> <laughs> right. What, what effect did they have? About, about old women? About, <laughs> about grandma and Auntie Bob. Oh, yeah, I'm, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I always sort of thought my, our, my, our grandma and Auntie... Because they, were, they always like babysat us they together. Was, yeah, they looked after us together. Yeah. So I always, you know... And they were uh, always feeding us. Yeah, oh. so I always thought, of oh, course, it's a bit like... Our, our grandmother but that's great. that is Doctor Who <clears throat> in it yeah. it's like making something that seems so normal and cosy mm. and making it the mm. worst thing possible yeah. Yeah. oh my god oh have you done one okay yeah, yeah. okay my last one Greg <laughs> says we'll happily go to war with the revisionists who claim this is a good story oh interesting well interesting. yeah I mean I wouldn't say it was a good story but I think it's all, it's all right yeah yeah I don't know, would you, would you use the, the good mantle to describe this story? I mean, it's not necessarily good, but... How many muffs out of ten are you giving it? <laughs> uh, I think five, but possibly five? a six. Johnny? I give it a six. Yeah. yeah. I, give it, I give it a six and a half. Would you? It's yeah. just on that <laughs> cusp. It's just on that, it's just on that muff of just being... <laughs> <laughs> it's but it, that, that nightmarish comic where it's sort of weirdly homely but it's also so fucked up mm. yeah I, like I totally get that and I think that is what is scary about this it's not necessarily the kind of Hitler-esque moustache kind of thing because I think that's a bit overplayed I yeah. think that whole you know yeah, allegory yeah. is a yeah. bit like yeah, in that, your that's, face yeah that's a bit daft isn't it and it's like okay fine he's got he's got a Hitler moustache but you know that whatever he's a space you know, mm. architects, he's trying to kill Not only that, with. the uniforms as well. They look a little yeah. bit in, like the SS, you know. In that they're kind of grey. Yeah, that's like, what I mean, like the, the, the style of yeah. it. Yeah, but like, I, I sort of think that the, the nasty part of it is that it is homely. Mm. There are council flats that look like that. Yeah. You know, and and that you, you don't. And they're not even run by. Uh, no, they're, 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 they're run by <laughs> Bristol City Council. Yeah. Um, you know, and so that there is a sort of weird homeliness to it, but it's like you don't know who's behind each of these doors. Yeah. And yeah. they're all up to their own weird shit, mm. and and that is the kind of creepy part of it. I'm sure that in an expanded form, it could be even yeah. worse slash better. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a there's a Paradise Towers uh, comic book. Comic book that yeah. uh, I'd love to take a look at actually. Mm. Um, I forget who the publishers are, but Cutaway uh, Comics. Cutaway Comics. Yeah, and they, they their stuff looks really cool. They were supposed um, to send us some stuff, and it never arrived at my my flat. Damn. So we could have been reading Paradise <laughs> Towers. We could have talked about it here, but oh, well. well, you never know. Um, and I also think uh, the, someone else we haven't mentioned is the uh, not the chief caretaker, oh, deputy. The deputy, the deputy, who is excellent. Mm. Yeah. Previously in Tomb of the Cybermen. Yeah, he was supposed to be played by Roger Daltrey from The Who. Thank fuck oh. that didn't happen. Yeah. Because that would have been awful. Yeah. It would have just really, this right. story would have had no hope. No, fucking Captain Brexit as the <laughs> deputy chief, chief caretaker. Jesus yeah. Christ. They're, no, he's, re he's really good. He, he has is. a very good, mm. a good uh, rapport with both Sylv mm. and with Richard Bryan. And he's he got does, a really yeah. nice arc where kind of yeah. at, the, at the end you think, yeah, I kind of imagine you would have gone, all right, this has gone too far. Yeah, too far yeah, yeah. And he, He's yeah. turned a blind, eye, a blind yeah. eye and, yeah. But now this zombie bloke going, yeah, yeah. has wandered in. I think something a bit wrong here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well done. Thank you for smelling the roses eventually. Uh, have you got any more? Oh, no, also, no. Oh, okay, okay I've got one from Bradley, uh, who says, a bizarre little oddity. Although it is far from perfect and a mess in many respects, 
This story has grown on me considerably over the years. Despite Richard Breyer's infamously bad acting and a group of caretakers with a collective IQ of two, there is some menace to be found in the grungy set design and the cannibalistic old ladies. There we go, the cannibalistic mm. old letters. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they are, you know, available for your viewing pleasure on the season 24 box set. I would <coughs> highly recommend everybody giving this another go. Yeah. Because mm. it's well worth it. Yeah, I think it's so. It's a proper laugh. Yeah. And it's daft and it's silly, but it's sort of Doctor Who. That, that, that comment about it kind of grinding into another direction. Yeah. You get that impression it, through it, the story. It's like re- it's desperately really trying do. to do something else. It feels like, th- this feels like, JNT's last mm. hurrah. Mm. This is like JNT's last chance to put his stamp on the program. He's before... got his stunt casting in. Yeah. And that it's and it's worked all right until episode halfway through episode three or whenever the yeah. Kragnon appears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then obviously season twenty five, you can feel more mm. Andrew Cartmore coming yeah, in. Yeah, all yeah. the young Absolutely, all yeah. the young people, the young <clears throat> blood is coming in. Yeah. And Gente is sort of slowly fading Stepping into the back. background mm. and it'll be like, oh, well, here's, like you said, a bit of stunt casting, here's yeah. an actor, here's a bit of publicity. But otherwise, I think you'll get on with it. You kids know what you're doing. Yeah. 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 That's how it kind of feels. So, yeah. yeah. Well, there we go. Mm. Uh, Paralyzed Towers has gone from here to here in Matt's Bottom of the muffs to, uh, to mid muff. <laughs> to the top of the muffs. Uh, so, yeah, we would highly recommend everybody gives it a go. Matt, do you want to sign off? I've had enough muff talk for the rest of the uh, day. Yes, I need therapy, uh, I think, by the time I leave here tonight. Yeah, yeah. what are you going to do? back me. to the staff room I go back tomorrow. to work tomorrow? <laughs> like, I know. What did you, what did you what do last did you, night, Johnny? You don't want to know. Talk yeah. about old years' muffs. Yeah. <laughs> Lezzo's muffs. Oh, yeah, doing me anyway. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to go and watch uh, Tabby and... Tilda, were they Tilda and Tabby? Yeah. Yeah, yeah in uh, having a munch. Muff diving with with cookies <laughs> and cream <laughs> too. Um, go to your local video store now. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be back next time. What are we talking about next time, Billy? We're talking about the backwaters of Doctor Who cartoons being the Infinite Quest. Oh yeah, and we're going to watch those. Dreamland. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. We need to find a copy of both of them. And I have I will... the Infinite Quest on DVD. We need to find Dreamland somewhere. From somewhere. It must be on like Daily Motion. It's got to be. Somebody would have, you know, it's not worth that what, much. What is this we're talking about? These were two animated episodes, 45 minutes each, aren't they, I mm-hmm. think? Uh, when? 2007 Seven and 8? 2009. Oh, nine, is, is it? Was it not a part of the specials year? Oh, it was part of the specials right. year. Uh, with David Tennant. Oh, right. Little animations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one was Cosgrove Hall. One looks like it was animated by a serial killer. <laughs> so uh, we look forward to that, and we look forward to you watching it in due course as well. So yeah. we will leave you with muffs. See you later. Yeah. Bye. Bye.